All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone should have a whiteboard on their desk and their notebook open and ready to go. Today we are going to start notes, of course. Friendly reminder, ladies and gentlemen, that we have a quiz on Monday and a primary source. On Tuesday we have a quiz and we're going to do a lecture. And on Wednesday, of course, we have a test. On Wednesday... You will pick up your assignments for week 14, which is normal, and you will take a photo of the map. Um, you will only have a map and a focus for week 14 because we have no school Thursday, and I will not be here on Friday. If you come to school on Friday, your assignment will be to work on the focus or work on the map. Those are your choices. It's not another stupid assignment or anything like that. You'll just be working on your assignments. Um, when I come back to school on Monday, hopefully if the airport gods let me, we will lecture on Monday, lecture on Tuesday, test on Wednesday. Sounds good? Okay. So, and then we have a week, and then we have a Thanksgiving break. Yay. Wow. Good. I'm so excited. Are you not excited? I am excited. Is that your excited face? I'm just not very verbal about it. <laughs> but inside you're super giddy and happy? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. So week 13, our heading is going to be economic development. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you do need to know that mercantilism is in decline. And... Capitalism is on the rise. There you go. So mercantilism is on the decline, and capitalism is on the rise. Okay? That is a huge deal. Now, you are going to see, you do need to make a note that um, it is going to have, uh, capitalism is going to have very little government involvement in the start. Okay, and what do we call that? What's the official term for the very little government involvement? Hayden? Laissez-faire. Laissez-faire, yes. Okay, so when capitalism is going to start in Western Europe and in the United States all about the same time, it is going to have very little government affair. You need to put a star. Governments are very slow to react to economic and social changes due to fear of slowing the economy. And this is going to be held true in every aspect going forward. Governments are slow to move and make changes out of fear <coughs> of economic. That's not the same thing I said, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> Okay, so governments are very slow to make changes in fear of stifling the economy. It's the same thing that we see here in the United States in 2021. Um, we have problems in our economy. Can we agree? Yes. The wealth gap is getting bigger and bigger by the minute here in the United States. With that is eventually it's going to come to a head and it's going to cause a major problem. Okay, we see this in every single civilization. Am I saying in five years or in 50 years? I have no idea, but eventually the wealth gap will become a problem. With that being said, the U.S. government doesn't want to interfere too much. One way that we can try slowing or closing that wealth gap is by a millionaire's tax. How does America feel about a billionaire's tax? Awful. Awful. It's like 50-50. Half the country wants it, half the country doesn't want it. Can we agree? Mm -hmm. And right now, it doesn't look like it's going, it's definitely not in the Build Back Better plan, so that was one of the first things scrapped. So, at some point... Okay, the government is going to have to make a move one way or the other on this type of wealth gap uh, that is created in the United States, but they're very hesitant on it. Why? Well, billionaires like Elon Musk this week sent out a tweet saying if you tax billionaires, billionaires will remove their money from the circulation of American economy. Is that a big threat? Yeah. Of course. So those are the types of things that make governments very hasty to make changes which makes it very slow to make changes. And we're gonna see this throughout everything. This just happens to be a pop uh, major thing because this is what Elon uh, tweeted about, I think, Tuesday of this week. So 
With that being said, governments are very slow to make changes because they don't want to stifle the economy too much. What do you got? Um, I was wondering, how could he take out his money from the Well, overall? he would move his company to another company, uh, to another country. So oh. all of it's being built here in the United States, or a lot of it's being built in the United States, okay. and a lot of the United States is benefiting from Tesla being headquarters here. Okay. So they move somewhere else. All right. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the first type we're going to be looking at is business structures uh, pre-industrialization. Okay, so business structures pre-industrialization is your heading. And the first one we're going to look at is traditional. Okay, so for your traditional business, it's a single business owner. Okay, so the Next subheading is traditional, and it is going to be a single business owner. Okay? Anyone here, parents, own their own business? Okay? James, what does your parents do? Uh, my dad owns like an interior design business. Okay, cool. Okay. And does he have a partner, or is it just his? Uh, well, he did have a partner. He bought it. Oh, so he is completely on his own. Oh, perfect. That is the exact answer I wanted. Thank you, James. Okay? So, James's dad. Uh, is a single business owner. He owns his firm, okay? With that being said, he has a small group of associates, and you need to write this down, who help make decisions. So he has people he relies on, correct, James? Yeah. That, uh, to give opinions, and who does he rely on? Do you know? Uh, like, I don't know, really like, like, who does, like, if he has business questions, like, who is his, like, confidant you dad at? There you go, that's exactly it. So the people he you have working underneath him, I just don't know how big the company is and I am not gonna say I know anything about interior design, so I don't know the headings of what the company will be, and he depends on those people, okay? So, um, I had a kid in my second period today who had, uh, whose mom owns a restaurant, okay? Mom owns a restaurant and she depends on her dad. So the mom and the dad run the restaurant together, okay? And that's how they make decisions amongst themselves. Okay, so the negatives, the drawbacks of owning a single business is that a single owner has a lot of risk. Okay, now depending on what type of company, now we're not gonna, I, probably James' dad owns an LLC. Is it an LLC? Okay, it sounds familiar. Okay, so that's a little bit different. But a traditional company like a restaurant, okay? So, if the restaurant goes under, what happens to the mom and the dad's job? Gone. They're gone. And they may also lose their house, their car, and anything else they put up as collateral for the loan. Okay, so when you have a single business owner, that single business owner can lose their home, their car, their uh, 401ks, all of their retirement can be tied to it. So when we see businesses open and close, the collateral damage of those businesses closing can be catastrophic, okay? So when we talk about negatives, single owners assume all of the risk. A lot of people put up collateral to get a loan. So say you need a half a million dollars to open a business, you can't just walk up to the bank and say, hey, can I have a half a million dollars? The bank is going to say, sure, what are you gonna put up for collateral? Collateral is, is how you're gonna balance it. So if you can't pay back the loan, what do we get? And a lot of people put up the mortgages of their house. So if you can't pay back the loan because your business collapses, what else do you lose? You also lose your house, okay? Or your car can be collateral as well because that has an eight value. Uh, and those can be sold as well. You can also put up your 401k, which is your retirement. You can also lose that in uh, when you're dealing with collateral as well. So single businesses can fail. Um, if they fail, they're the only person to lose. So that's a big deal. So in the second type of business is a corporation. Okay, now we're talking back in the 1700s and 1800s. So keep in mind about that. In the 19th century, corporations are gonna start changing and starting to look like how we see today. So when I talk about corporations right now, I'm talking about the 1700s and 1800s, and I'll talk about what like Target and Walmart are doing today in a second. Okay, so corporations have to be chartered by the government. Okay, corporations are only allowed if they're chartered by the government. Write that down because it's a huge thing. What does that mean? You have to ask the government to start a corporation. Today in 2021, 
You don't have to. If you want to start a corporation, you don't have to. But if you want to go public and trade on the stock market, you have to get the government's approval. Does that make sense? Okay. It's called the SEC. It's the Securities and Exchange Market. Have to investigate and look at your company to see if it's worth the amount of money they say it is. Okay? And the government comes in and regulates it to make sure your corporation is actually worth the money you're saying it's worth, which we'll get to here in a second. So what is a corporation? A corporation is owned by numerous stock owners. You need to have that information down. Stockholders own a small piece of the company. Does anyone here own stock? Like I'm talking like you, like someone bought it for you, used your money. Olivia, what do you got? Uh, Procter Gamble. Okay, why Procter Gamble? I don't know. I just, it was like a year old when someone bought it for me. Okay, so it was a gift. Okay. No one else in here owns stock? James, what do you own? Okay, so you get to pick, like, do I want an apple stock because I like apple? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, really okay. Hopefully he's managing your portfolio well. Micah? Yeah, okay, would be a company you've invested in, for Tesla. Tesla? Okay, Tesla stock's doing pretty damn well. So you're doing all right there. What else you got? Yeah. What the hell is that? It's, uh, it's oh, okay. See? I don't invest in stock. I have no idea. Huh? Oh, look at you. Anyone here doing like Bitcoin or like all that stuff? Not specifically Bitcoin. Anyone else? No one else is, is playing with that? Okay. All right. Well, last, first of all, all of you should be embarrassed. Second period, pretty much every kid ha owns stock on their own. I was blown away completely. I was uh, surprised. But then I was like, oh, it's a plant. And then you people, pretty much only three of you. And they're all in the same corner of the room. <laughs> That's also very strange. Okay. So. We've all heard of the stock market, yes? Okay, the stock market actually right now is doing incredibly well. With that being said, you buy stocks in a company. You can buy for any company that is public. Apple, Target, Home Depot if you're really into home, <laughs> home improvements, okay? Any company you're really interested in, you can also uh, buy stock in TikTok. TikTok stock has actually jumped huge this week. Isn't that insane? I'm trying to relate to you people. Okay, I'm trying really hard. Okay, so with that being said, stockholders are paid when the company makes money. So if you own stock in the company, when the value of the stock goes up, your value and stakes in the company go up. Now, if you just own a small share of stock, which is what you guys own, and I'm not trying to be insulting, and I'm also not assuming, because like, if you own Apple stock, you don't get a direct cut from Apple, unless you own like one and a half million shares. Everything else is just individual limited stock, which means you can sell at high points of the market in order to make your money. Does that make sense? Okay, so with that being said, you can make money off of selling your stock at high prices and that's how you reap the benefits. When we're talking about stockholders, they only make money off of the returns or the dividends of when the company is doing well. Positives, okay? The reason why corporations are the most popular structure today is because it's of limited liability, and you need to know that language, limited liability. Anyone's parents here have an LLC, a limited liability company? My dad owns one, he is a real estate agent, so he is a limited liability company. Um, what it means is, is that if he loses, so he's a real estate, uh, he's a real estate realtor. Good. He's pretty good. He's not great. <laughs> I'm sorry. He lives in like a really shitty part of Florida. Ooh. You haven't Actually, been to Actually, Ormond Beach. If you've been to Ormond Beach, you'd be like, yeah, that's pretty shitty. <laughs> Have you been to Ormond Beach, Micah? It, it sounds good. Huh? Yeah. Why? It's like north of like Daytona Beach. Oh. Thank you very much for proving my point. You're all judging me, but the moment I tell you where it is, you get it. Anyway, so my dad owns a real estate company, okay? He's a realtor and it's an LLC. So if his company goes under, which is pretty hard to do if you're a real estate agent because it's not like you have a ton of overhead. If it goes under, the LLC will protect my father's house 
his retirement, and his vehicle from being taken back by the bank. Does that make sense? So he can't lose. <laughs> he can't lose everything if his business goes under. However, the exchange is my father pays a ton of money in taxes. Does that make sense? There always has to be a pro and con. So with LLCs or limited liability co uh, companies, you pay a ton of money in taxes and you also ta pay a ton of money in loans. Your interest in loans is very, very high because of the protections given to you. Yes? So how much more on taxes are you So that would be a wonderful question for my husband who's an accountant. You are at the very peak of my business knowledge here. <laughs> I know what I need to know and I don't know anything else. And I will tell you I am not involved in the financial planning decisions of my little family <laughs> because I don't know much. Wouldn't, wouldn't the money give, like, given by your dad like equate to like the total No, it is. I'm <laughs> He's having a good time out there. I'm so sorry, Sophia. Please I said, begin sorry. asking your question. I said, what if the money that he gives every year, like, pretty much, like, equate to the amount that he leaves? Um, to a degree, but there's some stability. Because my dad has a lot of assets in his 401k because he worked for a very prestigious company up north. When he retired, he opened his LLC to do real estate. So he's trying to protect those assets as well. And if anyone sues my dad, they don't have access to his like his actual genuine wealth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They have access to the company wealth uh, unless they sue him personally. Do we see the difference? You can sue a company or you can sue a person. So if they sue my dad's company, they only have access to a certain amount of money. They don't have access to his personal wealth which is part of the protection of doing an LLC, which is the biggest attraction to people who do LLCs. And I'm just gonna tell you, it sounds like I know so much, and I'm so proud of myself. Because I don't. All right, perfect. Uh, they are very economically and politically powerful. Who can give me one of the perfect examples of what will become a corporation? You already know two of them. What do you got? Una Lieber. You, those are going to be those are going to be uh, uh, what we're going to call uh, transnational companies, oh. not corporations at this point. Olivia. The tobacco is that one? Oh no, that's in Japan. What, what do you got, it? Joseph? They're not technically corporations; they're more traditional, but like a hybrid in a weird way. Okay. What do you got, Joseph? The East India Company. Yeah, the East India Company and the VOC and the EOC are perfect examples of corporations because remember we're dealing with the 1700s to 1800s. So we're having a limited component. Having Target or Walmart would not be a great example because those are more of your transnational companies that we're gonna discuss right now. Does that make sense? Okay, so your transnational country, uh, com country. companies are companies that acro uh, operate across borders, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, they gain wealth and influence on a scale like never been seen. So these are more of your traditional uh, corporations. So when you think of Walmart, Target, Amazon, those are transnational country uh, companies. Ugh. Okay. So this is what we think of when we think of companies. Like for instance, my husband works for an accounting firm called Crow. It is the seventh largest accounting firm in the in the world, and, and no, in the United States, I think they're like 14th in the world. And with that being said, he had, his company has offices in like 58 of uh, world capitals and stuff like that and all throughout the world. With that being said, they are a transnational country, a uh, transnational company, damn it. Okay, so this is going to be the standard post-industrialization. Transnational companies are incredibly common post-industrialization. You need to have post-industrialization. Incredibly what? Sorry. Transnational companies are very common and will be the standard in Europe and in the United States in post-industrialization. Okay, so perfect examples are going to be the Hong Kong uh, Shanghai Banking Corporation. This is a big one and you need to put a star because it's really unique. Whew.
Okay, so your Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. It is unique because it is the first time a colonial power put financing availability in a colony. It is unique because it is the first time a, col a colonial power puts financing options inside a colony. They do it for two reasons. One, it protects the assets of the colonial power. Okay, it protects the assets. So if England, uh, for instance, in Hong Kong or Shanghai, which is where this bank originally starts and then spread all over, there's branches here in Florida, in Tampa. Does anyone's family bank in HBSC, HKSC? No, they have like gold. They're like orange, um, I think they're ugly. But they have like these debit cards, they're orange. My grandma has an orange debit card. Is it a I have no idea. HSBC, which is what they go by? Oh, I have no idea. Okay, anyway. Um, moving forward. The second thing that they are responsible, it allows other colonists or white people to invest and start companies easier and faster in colonies. So ladies and gentlemen, are these banks available for the local or indigenous? No. They're for the? White people, to make it easier for white people to start businesses, to protect white people's money, to ensure that their money is safe. So it is used as a tool of colonialism. Dun, 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 dun. And it's hella effective. People are going to be opening businesses like crazy uh, because they already have the line of credit available to them in the colonies. So instead of having to transfer your wealth in like bags essentially you can just transfer your money to the local bank and spend it more efficiently as well as you can borrow money from the government directly it makes it more efficient to uh, make money that way okay a couple things you need to know these are used for finance corporate investment and banking for european investors these are not for local people up until the late 1900s Okay, these are not for local people, these are for the colonial powers. They are for finance, corporate investment, and banking. <clears throat> okay, and you do need to put a star. This is going to increase global economy. Why is it going to increase the global economy? Why, Henry? Give more like European backbones and stuff to businesses. There you go, it's gonna allow that. And it's also easier to move money between banks if the banks are already present, correct? So you're gonna start seeing a lot more movement of money and people are investing a lot more money because it's easier to move it, okay? All right. So, other companies that you do need to know of that are transnational. De Bears, okay, you need to know them. If you wanna get Ren all hot and bothered and upset about a topic, ask him what he thinks about diamonds. He hates diamonds and precious stones, which is kind of justified, but his, in, uh, his rage against it is a little obscene. So, he is pissed off because the De Beers company owns 80% of all diamond mines in the world. Okay, so who controls the price of diamonds? So, if you are going to pay money and the price of diamonds keep going up, who is to blame directly? <laughs> there you go. And who are they? You do need to know the company is originally founded by Cecil Rhodes. Okay? It's a dude, not a chick. It would be cool if it was a chick, but it's not because it's the 1800s. Chicks aren't allowed to do business. Duh. Okay, so. He is going to start investing in Africa, and he is going to invest in what was supposed to be a trans-African railway, which never appears, because the British don't own all the land. 
Okay, so the De Bears, you do need to know who they are. They're in the diamond industry. They were attempting to invest in a trans-African railway, but it never occurred because the British didn't own all the land. And next week, when you do your Africa map, you're going to be pretty shocked the British don't own all the land because the British own most of it. All right. And then your Unilever Corporation is your last one, and then we'll do boards after this. Okay, your Unilever Operation Corporation. Okay, you do need to know it's controlled by both British and Dutch, so it's supported by the British and the Dutch government. Okay, something that makes it really unique, and you need to put a big star because this is how things are, businesses have done now. They are the first to build plants in different parts of the world to cut down shipping costs and serve more people. Be right back now. <laughs> Do you need to go? Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, they are going to open factories in places in Australia, Switzerland, and the United States. Okay, those factories are then going to produce the goods and sell them to people in Europe, people to Australia, and people to the US. So instead of having one massive factory that services the world, they have factories in different places. Now, I can tell you with great authority, we do this with beer here in the United States. Did you know Budweiser is the largest brewery here in the United States? Do you know that they have six plants here in the United States to keep up with American demand for Budweiser products? Did you know that the whole United States is broken up into six beer districts? And there is one massive plant that produces beer for all of those states. Budweiser. Why? Because shipping heavy bottles of beer is very expensive, especially in bottles, which is how most Americans like their beer. Because of that, shipping costs are really high. They only did it in uh, St. Where is it from? Anheuser is in um, Louis. Why was that so hard for me? Why was that so hard? It's originally from St. Louis, okay? So to have just one plan St. Louis fill the needs of all American and their desire for Budweiser products, it would be too much. So they have six plants in order to make cut down costs of shipping and make it more effective. Same thing happens with Coke. Did you know the United States is divided into five portions for Coca-Cola? Did you know Yangling, Yangling has two? Yingling beer, it's a beer. It's a brown ale, it's not very good. But we have one here in Tampa, it's over by Bush Gardens. Oh, that, that is in Yingling. The other one's in Pottsdale, uh, Pennsylvania, which is where Yingling originally starts. It makes me sound like I'm such a drunk, but I am not. <laughs> um, I happen to know these things. Huh? What did you say, Scott? Yeah. What about wine? Huh? We drank the wine. No, no, I really don't drink that much. But I happen to know these things because I've been in the restaurant industry for a very long time. You're an intellectual. Yeah, I mean, I hate Yangling. I'm not a real Bud Light kind of girl anyway. So, but I happen to know these things. Here we are. All right, Unilever. These are all the companies Unilever controls. Think of all the products you have in your house that are all actually controlled by one company. Like, look, like, okay. Why do compete with themselves in so many industries? Because if they compete with themselves, they drive up costs on both sides. They drive up profits on both sides. It's actually genius. That's smart. It's just like more versatile than BIC. BIC is super versatile, too. Oh, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was going to go back to another alcohol family, <laughs> but I think I'm already drawing quite the picture here of myself. Like, for instance, Bud Light also controls. <laughs> Budweiser also controls White Claws, which is the largest alcohol, uh, most popular drink here in the United States today, and it also controls um, a bunch
bunch of your craft breweries, like Sam Adams, which is the number one craft breweries here in the United States. So they have different divisions of all of these things. Wait, Wait, what do you call it? The best, the favorite drink? It's the favorite, most popular drink in the United States. Like right not now. even just like alcohol drink? It, well, like item that you can purchase, White Claw is it. More White Claws are being sold than any other drink at this well, point. That's like wow. beers, that's everything. They got some bad taste. Moving forward, but it is the number one drink sold right now. What do we got? Have you seen the Nestle one where they own like 700 companies? No, I haven't seen the Nestle one. Oh yeah, that one's bad. I know Nestle or um, Nestle got into huge trouble in the early 1950s uh, in South a in Africa because they went to Africa to tell people they shouldn't breastfeed their children and then they should have formula. But they didn't teach them how to clean the bottles in order for it to be accurate, and it's going to kill about 50,000 children. Yeah, so it's a big deal. Anyway, to the boards, friends. Doesn't Mars own this? I have no idea. Yes, I know. Miss Tate has my power cord. How much longer do we have? 10 minutes. Oh, perfect. All right. On your whiteboard, what does LLC stand for? the random information you can learn in AP World. Good. What do we got, Catherine? There you go. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is uh, the most popular economic system occurring in Western Europe? Good. Mecca. Um, Micah. I do have a Mecca, though. So, All right. Capitalism. On your whiteboard, please tell me. <coughs> Traditional or corporation? It's a single owner. Maggie. Traditional. Traditional. <laughs> There's just not like a ton of questions I can ask. That's the question about beer. Us and Cincinnati. Thank you, Hayden. You're so welcome, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you things that you can maybe relate to. I'm just trying. I'm not saying like beer, but like do you know these brands? That's what I'm trying to rely to. Do you know the brands? That's what I'm saying. Damn it, I'm getting myself in trouble. And I'm just, just simply trying to connect it to things you're here about. I mean, I doubt that you guys are really interested in the diamonds. I mean, those are so far away from you at this point. What do you got? All right, here we go. I do need monopolies though. I need to, do need to talk about monopolies. So on your notes, yes, and moving on. <laughs> Monopoly. Monopoly is when there is no competition in the market. It's uh, still on the same thing. Monopolies is when there is no competition in the market. A perfect example of this is Standard Oil, which is going to be broken up by the U.S. government in the 1930s. What do we mean by no competition? So Standard Oil is going to own 73% of all gas companies in the United States. So who gets to decide the prices? Michael, what is wrong? Perfect. Okay, so Standard Oil controls 73% of all oil refineries in the United States. So who sets the price of gas in the United States? So if they want to jack up the price, can they? Yeah. Yeah. If they want to hold America hostage, can they? Yeah. That is a huge problem. And eventually the United States is going to do monopoly busting in the 1930s, and this will be something you study for like three weeks in um, AP US, where they break down these monopolies and they break Standard Oil into four different companies. And so now it'll create competition. Competition is what a capitalistic society wants. The more competition, the better the prices are. Right, Taylor? So when we're talking about monopolies, what would be a modern day uh, monopoly? What do you got, Scott? Because those are municipalities, they're part of the government structure. What do you got? Nestle? No, actually. What? Nestle is not. No, they're not an American <laughs> company, uh, and there is competition in the market. Yeah, but like, don't they own like all the water bottles, like Palm Springs, that bring like all of them? Um, see, that's interesting. I don't think so. 
Yeah, they, they do have water. Yeah, but I don't think it's a monopoly. Guys, like, it's just coming out that Facebook is a massive monopoly on the tech scheme in 2021. Oh, yeah. So much so that the United States government is deciding currently, like, right now, there is a uh, petition to the Supreme Court to see if we're going to start busting up them as a monopoly. What, what are they monopolizing? They control Facebook. They own Instagram. They own WhatsApp. And of the top ten, they also own number seven, eight, and nine. So they control, that's not how that works. They also, that's not how that works. Now, one of the major actions that Facebook does in order to eliminate competition is they buy new apps from upcoming um, developers and then they kill them. So they can't compete with Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp, which are the three most popular apps, which are about like apparently like 80 something percent of uh, social media presence. So Amazon technically is not a monopoly, technically, because it allows other companies to use its platform. It's flirting, it's flirting. But the biggest, uh, clearest one at this moment that the United States is dealing with is Facebook. So that will probably be dismantled in the next couple of years if the US government can kind of figure it out. Now keep in mind, as we started this whole conversation today, the government is really slow to process how to move because they don't want to stifle development, but they also need to find a regulation of the economy, and it's pouring. So with that being said, with this whole tech space, of it's kind of unregulated at the moment because the government hasn't caught up with it. You've heard the hearings where we have our senators ask questions to these people, and it's embarrassing, they're like, how do I access my email? Like, how embarrassing? And how are they supposed to pass laws if they don't even understand the technology? Wesley. What does it matter if, it's, if they control most of what's displayed? Because they get to control what information we see. And if they control all the information we see, which we're having a huge problem with misinformation on Facebook. Like, if you ask my mother what she reads on Facebook, it is horrifying. <laughs> yeah. She has, like, a master's degree. And she's quoting off bogus Facebook commentary. Perfect. All right, industrialization on mass culture. Do you find this stuff interesting at all? Yeah, I just think the beer part interesting. Can we leave the beer stuff alone, damn it? I know, well, I'm trying. Yeah, but what do you want me to talk about? Kitty litter? I don't know that much about it. <laughs> I, don't know. I would think kitty litter is very expensive to produce because you have to ship it but across the nation. Money. Michael, whatever you're doing, don't. What, Catherine? They sell it for so much money for no reason. Um, do you have cats? Yes. Yes. Um, girl, you need it. So I'm going to pay whatever cost. Yeah. It exactly, is. that's the problem. I know. I have two dumb cats. Yeah, what are your cats named, Taylor? The fact you had to take so long to respond, like that, oh, this is not, it's not good. How old are they? Are they old or young? Uh, they're young, like three years. Oh my gosh, how cute. Is Oreo black and white? Yeah. Oh, how cute. And Peach, is she orange? No. Oh my gosh. She's gray? My sister named it. Well, I have a Dunkin' and a Donut at home, and Donut is super fat. Thank you for asking. <laughs> And they are old. They are 13 years old. Yeah, they are all like human names. Nope, Dunkin' and Donut. I didn't get to name it. They're having a much better time than we are. All right.